Hello. Hi, Benny. Hi, Royce. How are you doing? Uh, great, great. <laughs> good to see you okay. again. <laughs> yeah, good, great. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We have a special session tonight. Uh, we have uh, Royce Tay, who's a professional trader, and also um, you know, he has also been a uh, trading coach and trainer, right? And um, I'll, let, I'll let Royce do an uh, introduction a little bit about himself in shortly. Uh, maybe Royce, you can explain, uh, you know, uh, what do you do, um, you know, uh, as a professional, and then uh, we can start. Uh, but before before we do that, if you can hear us and see us well, uh, can you just say yes in the comment section? Okay. Hi, Joshua. Hi, Hello. Hong Ji Wong, Rasmavi, Jetinder. Today, trading psychology, Rasmavi is asking, is it about trading psychology? Yeah, it's got to do with uh, trading psychology. <laughs> okay. Uh, Florence, Apnesh, Daniel, Wendy, Brontok, Daniel, Karin, Charlie. Hi, how? How are you guys doing tonight? Okay, thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Rebecca. It looks like we are all set to go. Yeah. Okay. Let me just bring up my screen on the short wall. Um, all right. Let's have to go through a few stuff before we start, yeah? Okay, sure. Yeah, welcome, guys. Tonight's topic is um, rather quite a thought-provoking topic, right? Why do most traders lose money in trading? So before you want to even become successful, you really need to know why most traders fail because that will uh, allow you not to follow their footsteps. All right, so... Um, yeah, so we have Roy stay with us today, right? And uh, he's going to share with us, okay, why most of the traders lose money in trading. And of course, he will also share with us what markets uh, he's been trading as well. So for yeah. those who are trading, um, whether you are trading short term or long term, um, you are trading, right? When you buy and sell shares, you are, or when you buy and sell futures, you are um, yeah. trading as well, okay? So we're going to discuss about this today. And uh, you know what, guys? we have a very special stuff for you guys tonight there is a 150 ringgit worth of touch and go top ups to be won all right so get ready we will ask your questions so this is how it works uh the, we're gonna ask three questions at different times and the one who answered the correct question the fastest or the earliest will win that 50 ringgit top up so there'll be three winners tonight Okay, so each winner will walk away with 50 ringgit worth of touch and go top up. And that should settle for your one month of paying toll. <laughs> All right. Um, so before we start, uh, short disclaimer, whatever that is being shared here today and being discussed here today is for educational purposes only, right? Not intended as any investment advice or whatsoever. If you want to look for investment advice, please do look for a professional and licensed investment advisor okay so get ready guys um yep have, uh, royce day actually tonight yeah. with us and he's representing uh yutaka shori who is a japanese um, trading firm who is licensed from um the busa malaysia and also securities commission to trade in the futures market so they are yutaka shori is actually a licensed futures broker right here in Malaysia. And basically, Royce is their representative for tonight. Yes. Right? Yep. Okay, so okay. Royce, yeah. maybe you want to just explain to you who you are and what do you do? Uh, uh, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, I'm Royce, uh, actually uh, from uh, Penang. So basically, I'm do is a full-time uh, trader. And also, I'm doing on the coaching as well. <laughs> okay, so this one. I'm. So uh, yeah, today we're going to discuss about uh, trading and also investing and how you're going to make a good profit in the trade and what it should do and should not do in the trade, like, basically. Uh, mm. Yeah. So do you, you do both trading and investing as well, right, Royce? Yeah, yeah. Long term and short term as well. Mm. Yes. Mm. Okay, so is there any difference uh, between trading and investing in your perspective? Because I also do trading and investing, yeah. right? And uh, yeah. of course, there are some differences, but maybe you want to share a little bit. Uh, what's the difference yeah. like? Yeah, sure, sure. So basically for uh, 
uh, trading and also investing. Uh, the, the same thing is about uh, we need to put the money also. La. <laughs> yeah, the, the different thing is about uh, trading is more focused in the short term. So normally we focus in the uh, normal is a, is a day trade or maybe it's a, a, a hold for just about a few days. But often it's a, it's a day trade. So compared to the investing, uh, I would say investing, we need to target about more longer time frame, uh, which is uh, mostly we do in the stock market. Uh, yeah, we hold for maybe a, a few years of uh, value investing or maybe a few decades or maybe longer time frame we do. So this is about investing and also uh, trading too. So, uh, but for the risk uh, management, uh, of course, for the trading is a uh, high risk, high gain. Um, yeah, for the, for the, what I call the investing, maybe the return can be slow, but due to compound, uh, compounding ratio, I think it be happen a huge profit in the future while doing this kind of investment so-called. So yeah, th this is about the difference between the trading and also investing, I would say. Mm. And, and what markets do you trade, Arois? Okay, basically uh, for now, uh, actually I'm trade a lot of market uh, before that, but up to date, uh, I only trade those market uh, under Malaysia sunlight. <laughs> uh, what mm. is called Malaysia sunlight basically is about uh, it, uh, Malaysia trading hours. Uh, example, uh, uh, we trade FCPO, FKLI, uh, Singapore Index, uh, and Taiwan Index, and Hang Seng Index, uh, which is uh, under uh, the sunlight of Malaysia. So easily, like, we can get uh, more our lifestyle because normal lifestyle, no need to work hard for the overnight to wake up to trade like Dow Zone, uh, Nasdaq is a uh, wake up in the night time. So mm -hmm. this is what we do. Yeah. Okay. So you only trade the Asian time zone, uh, You don't trade other yes. markets. Market, yes. Yes. So. That's right. Yeah. Okay. But do you trade forex as well? No. Uh, no. I I not trade forex because it's quite hard. It's under gray area. I will say that. Uh. But actually, no. We only focus on uh. Yeah. In the legal side. Uh. Trading field. We only play mm -hmm. on the legal side. Yeah. Because yeah. I see mostly doing um palm oil futures trading, right? Bursa Malaysia palm oil futures yes. trading. Yeah. All right. It will yeah. come. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, futures, uh, basically, yeah, we were, ta were more targeted on, uh, on the, what I call the palm oil futures and also the stock also, we can focus on it also. La. It nearly quite the same, uh, what I call the strategy that we use. Uh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Why, why, why you choose yeah. being a trader? Yeah, because, uh, okay, to be a trader, yeah, from my lifestyle, from the beginning of the trading, I will say that uh, most we focus is about uh, trader is more focused on the short term to generate the profit. Yeah. So uh, in, a, in the trading, as a, as a trader, the lifestyle will be different from others. I will say that. So because as a trader, yeah, you can manage your time. So example for now, you can, we can have a, you can have a check check like now, <laughs> but being, if let's say you are a working person, I think now is about OT. Is doing the OT, so oh, it, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So as a trader, you can uh, escape from uh, nine to five o'clock. Uh, what I call the traffic jam or so lah. So this is what we we be a trader lah. So the next thing to be honest, uh, mostly trader is look for the profit lah. It's a faster way to generate the profit lah. So because uh yeah, as a trader, we must uh, very disciplined. So for the long term continuous this kind of trading business, uh, so we can generate a consistent profit as well. So, but uh, yeah, as a trader, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. I need to put a little bit hard work on it, lah. I would say hard work on mm. it. Mm. Maybe maybe you can explain yourself because uh, mm. maybe explain to the audience um, what what do you do exactly every day to find to find opportunities in trading. Ah uh, yeah, basically in the morning session at uh, eight o'clock, I wake up already lah. So from that time, I will screen through all what I call all the indexes, all the world market. Uh, so because to prepare ahead for our FQLI, it's going to move at eight forty-five. So yeah, it's a little bit hard that we need to wake up early as a trader lah. So after a while, we'll do a setup. We'll do a setup for uh, enter the trade. 
for short term and also long term. So prepare on ahead. So after that, uh, basically after a, a, a breakfast, yes, we'll jump through the trade to enter the market. So basically this is a trader life will be. Lah. So after a while, when you hit a profit target or maybe it hit a, what are called exit plan, uh, we will left the market exactly. So we'll continue about afternoon. The CPO market is more volatile on the afternoon market when the European market start. So this is our life that continue trade until about six. So we have a rest. Then this entire of my lifetime like, to spend more time for my family and my kids also. Like. <laughs> this is what we do. Uh, mm -hmm. It's quite yeah. fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 why a lot of people actually want to be a trader because yeah, it's really uh, be your own boss, right? You yeah. are control of your yes. own. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what information do you use to make uh, trading decisions? Do you solely purely based on uh, charts or technical analysis? Uh, okay, basically, what we did for this uh, entry, the trader, uh, uh, normally we seldom uh, use the fundamental uh, technical analysis. Yes, but not a lot. Not a lot. Uh, mostly we focus on the price action this method price action so what we uh, did every day for past uh, many many years and when I'm, I'm trading so most of the time we target on the price action when the when the water color the volume hit in and the candlestick bar is start to stretch so at that time we that we we do the entry to the market so it, it not going to focus on the fundamental because fundamental, what is going to happen is already done. So it's already a history, I would say that. So for the technical analysis tools, uh, most efficiency that uh, can be used to trade, I would encourage more to look over on the, what they call the FIBO retracement. Yeah, FIBO retracement is one of the tools that uh, I would say that it is very powerful because what we can do is to plan ahead where is the entry point and do a padding order before the market start to the action. So yeah, FIBO will, will make us a, a lot of easier to enter to the market for for this uh, FCPO and also this FKLI. Lah. Because most of both of this market is under Malaysia uh, tradable market. Uh, it's easier because the timing is uh, time zone is quite good. Like FKLI is a uh, 8.45 and FCPO is started at uh, at uh, ten thirty for today, but every day is the same. <laughs> so yeah, I, I would say FIBO retracement is the best ever tools that can be applied for pending all the order before the market start to move. I would say that. So um, normally you get ready first your setups or your action yes. plan before the market start, right? Yeah, I will. I will do a ready. We we calculate everything first. So uh, the the pending will be put in. So everything was in according to the plan. So that's why we uh, trader must have a plan, plan ahead. So you must know where to enter, uh, where to exit, or maybe the stop loss setup, maybe a break even, at, uh, how many points you're going to target to hit it. So yeah, this is about the plan. We plan ahead at the early morning. So according to the plan, we jump to the boat. So yeah, every day is a, just a routine job, I would say that. Mm. Okay. All right. There are some questions yeah. coming in, but guys, if you have any questions, you yeah. can just start. Now. And, um, yeah. later we'll bring up the questions. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So what we're going to do yeah. now is I'm going to go into today's topic, right? So now mm. you know a little bit more about Royce and what he does. All right. Uh -huh. I'm going to go to the topic of why most traders fail. But before that, so this is the first giveaway. All right. Now the decision is final because uh, some of you are actually viewing from Facebook and some of you are from YouTube. So I'm actually having a screen where I actually see both of you guys commenting. So the first one that appears on my screen with the right answer is going to win that 50 ringgit top up for touch and go. All right. Now, so all you need to do is to type in the right answer. Okay. Now we just started today's uh, session. So today's session is uh, the first question is not got nothing to do with today's session. Uh, and because we are now in the Merdeka yep. um, mood, okay, <laughs> now the question is, the question is, uh, what is to this year's Merdeka slogan? All right, so put our answer right now. 
if you get the first one got it right, it's going to win that 50 ringgit. Okay. The slogan for this year's Merdeka celebration. Okay. So what we're going to do is you get the right answer. I'm going to announce the person who's going to, who won, and then uh, we'll contact you. Uh, we'll message you to get, to get some details from you so that we can send it to you. All right. King Lee. No, I did not ask for the year. I asked for what's the slogan. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. We got the first, um, we got the first winner. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm just going to show on the screen. The winner is drum roll. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. Uh. I'm uh, it's just refreshing right now because I need to get the right uh, one, the right uh, person who won. Darren Ng, the right answer is the right answer. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we got the first winner. Uh, this is from YouTube. At least the difference is only microseconds. Huh? Um, the winner is Jamima Raoud. Answer is Malaysia Prihatin. That's the team for tonight. All right. So Jamima, could you please? Um, I'm not sure whether we are able to contact you, but you know what? Can you put in your um, email on the on, on the YouTube comment because you are viewing from YouTube. So put in your email on the YouTube session so that our colleagues are able to contact you. All right. Better still, put in your contact number so we can contact you immediately. All right. Put in your contact number in. If you do not want to put your contact number, just put your email. All right. Okay. So we got the first winner, guys. We still get another two more um, gifts to be won. Right. So we have 50 ringgit worth of pop up. And um, this is basically being brought to you by Yutaka Shori and also Busa Malaysia Derivatives. All right. Yep. Okay. So, um, Royce, you're going to yeah. go into today's topic. Um, so why, why do you think, right, um, most yeah. traders lose money in the markets? Yes, sure. So, uh, uh, yeah, there, there are a few uh, examples that uh, why most uh, traders uh, fail to trade uh, or fail on the trading side. So, uh, okay, for the most of the beginning, actually, uh, in my even my class or even my topic and uh, discussion, also, I will say about uh, to be a trader or maybe to be an investor or whatever to be, lah, you must have a like so called a paper practice, paper trade on a paper or we call paper practice trade. Lah. So mm. this is not about, a lot of people are thinking that, hey, Royce, uh, paper trade is not really uh, making a feel, a feel on the trade. But yes, it's not really a, a feel, nothing on the trade. But paper trade is most important that before you jump to the real trade. Because paper trade, actually, it can uh, give you some, what to call, uh, it gives you some note or maybe some of the, uh, platform you, you need to familiar yourself with the platform where to call out the what I call the hot key on the buy sell or market or, or stock or limit this kind of hot key that you need to know so in a paper trade it also able to let you to to generate some confidence on your strategy so how good your strategy actually in a paper trade you will find it out because paper trade it is a uh, so called is a demo trade also because last time we use a paper trade, but nowadays I think all the platform because the platform is nowadays is very advanced. Yeah, it can let you uh, have a what I call a demo trade, and yeah, you can use a demo trade to run a, a virtual trade on your strategy. Is that uh, your strategy really work on the real market? So this is what I always encourage all my friends, fellow, and my student that must go through the paper trade. So yeah, this is a it is the first of the things that some newbie it really jump jump through this uh, paper trade. So what after that is come to the real market, <laughs> they will jump here and there because they say, hey Royce, where to find the, the entry button, the buy button, the sell, the hot key, everything. Yeah, they become a clang kabut. I will say that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, this is a paper trade must be practiced always, uh, even mm. for a week or a month. Also, yep, you, you must practice a paper trade. 
yeah, th this is the first that I'm going to discuss about this paper trade. So, that's, uh, for secondly, why the uh, trader uh, fear on the trading? Uh, the second is about the trading plan. So, trading is a uh, is a not kind of a hobby or a job. Actually, uh, a trading is a really a skill. You must really have a skill to to run through this uh, market in the in the financial term. It's a financial market now. However, in the uh, futures or or maybe in the stock market, yeah, you must have you must have a plan. If let's say you you fail to plan, I will say that there's a layman term uh -huh. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So whatever that uh, trading come in, yes, you must uh, plan ahead. Example, where you're going to enter the market, what is the price, and where is your stop loss, where is your profit target, and where is your next change of the trend. If let's say the market start uh, uh, going against your position, what should you do? So all the figure you must start to come out in the plan or come up at your mind side that you must know where to get exit when after you're facing some uh, market volatile or market not moving sideways. So, so you need to plan what should do for the next step actually. So this is what that uh, some newbie uh, not really uh, understand why, why we must plan. They always ask me why we must plan. Yep, you must plan, else you're going to fear the market, <laughs> all right? So, so they say if you, if you fail <laughs> to plan, you plan to fail, isn't it? <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. So this is no, normally new, new behavior will happen, these kind of things, uh, right? Mm. So, uh, okay, for, for the next that uh, I will say is about uh, not being overtrade, uh, not being overtrade. So because uh, sometimes we, we, because we are the human, uh, emotion is there, I would say, emotion is there. So, but however, uh, how good is your strategy? Maybe it, it happened for a few times a uh, winning trade, uh, but not to be too much uh, put on the confidence on it. Uh, because uh, market, we're not sure. Sometimes it may happen uh, changes on the market. So after a few winning trade that you think that you are so confident, you just put it on a, another zero at the back, but uh, it, it's not a good practice because if you add on a zero at the back, it really, it, if let's say it turned to the profit, it's really good. Lah. But when it turned to the loss, lah, actually it's very pressure for, for the traders. Mm -hmm. And after I think one or two times, lah, they will left the market because it's too much, too much of pressure on it if you keep on gear up your lot size. Lah. So yeah, th this is uh, uh, not a good practice if, to gear up uh, suddenly. Lah. So even uh, professional traders like, like us, to gear up the lock size, make sure uh, the strategy must be run through about two to three years, uh, pass all the tests for this strategy, then only we start to gear up. Or maybe some of the profit that we compound on the intraday trade, then only we use it to gear up our lock size. Lah. So mm. this is what we did. Mm. Okay. All right. Mm. So, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe some case. Uh, I also discussed about some few cases also uh, because I just go through by today. <laughs> uh, yeah, some of my students, uh, yeah, they, they were, it's a quite professional trader. Mm, but some of them is just uh, what to do is uh, wasting the time on doing the research. Uh -huh. Because as a trader, if let's say you keep on doing the research every day, every time by, by using the past historical uh, data or keep on analyze all the historical, buy all the DVD, <laughs> actually it's, it's not a, a, a good uh, practice because uh, every, everything, all the research or analysis is just a history. I will say that uh, profit is come from the future, not about the past. So the past is already past. <laughs> okay. So make sure we, we write on the on the trend, which is you can use uh, nowadays a uh, technology to do a, a back test on your strategy or do a, a forward test on your strategy. Yeah, make 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 a good use on the technology nowadays to run all kinds of uh, strategy that you feel it really works for the market. Because whatever you feel is not really work sometimes. Yeah, it can be changed. So what we did is uh, try try to use a kind of a so-called algorithm or maybe a robot, yeah, coding or anything. 
to write on the market before you misstep. It will cost you a lot of money if, let's say, a misstep. <laughs> All right. So yeah, th this is a thing that I will always uh, discuss with my friend. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so uh, if, mm. a, if a new trader who just want to start mm. trading, right? So um, yeah. of course, uh, they have to go and learn how to trade. Number one. Yes. Um, but the first uh, thing that they must do is, like you said earlier, to do paper trading, right? Trade, paper trade, yeah, or demo trade, lah, we so call. Mm, so try mm. out first, lah. Yes. So that's the first step that I think everyone should do before they put yes. in their real money, lah. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because you know, so, yeah, I think I think that's just very important as well because people, you know, uh, once they learn and they 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 they, they before they go to demo trading yes, or paper trading. Yes. You know, they, they they go into the market and especially in day trading when the prices move very fast you know it's just like oh i don't know what to do it's not, I'm not prepared right yes um, yes so, so the uh the paper trading is more like for you although yeah you don't have the feeling of uh, yeah don't really because you don't put real money in right yeah uh, there's no emotion <laughs> yeah but at least it prepares you yeah. uh trade lah, right uh, yes, although yes. The, later on you put in the money then you get the emotions coming because without money you don't get the emotions Right, but yep. it's important to go through that because even yeah. like uh, even when you want to do even like a pilot, right? Yeah. You have to go through yeah. hours of simulations first before yeah. you can yeah. explain, right? Yes, so, that's right. Yeah, so that that will probably be the first step, eh? Yeah, um, the probably the first step. If beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so for for this uh paper trade, I, I will say that it's very important uh, because uh, we need to know uh, where is the key location, how to call out the chart, how to call out the indicators. Uh, what happened if let's say the chart didn't call out you need to call who you want to call uh, so so this kind of thing like emergency button where is located right to jump out from the market uh, so yeah we, we need to know more about the platform actually the platform setup i will say that uh, mm. okay now um I, I have some questions actually coming maybe before we continue you want to answer yeah. some questions right uh, yeah okay there's a question from anthony lao okay i'm just going to put a question up on the screen yeah. huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he asks is when, when price is coming down, investor mm -hmm. will do cost averaging, but trader will cut loss. Is this correct? Ah uh, yes, that is a correct point. Because when the when the price comes down, if let's say you are the traders, uh, normally in the normal practice, that is a cut loss, you are right. But uh in the professional trader terms, uh yeah, they also did a cut loss, but uh they will turn the position to become a short trade. Become a short means a sell. Yeah, they will turn the position. Maybe they do mm. a recovery, or maybe they turn a new position, uh, towards the the what I call the downtrend. Yeah. Yeah. So that that is only available if you are trading in the futures market, lah. But you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. So yeah, in in the futures market, you can you know not just you can cut losses and then just get out of the market, but you can actually yeah. turn your position yes. the other way. Around. Yes, right, so yes, you know, correct. You know, you're expecting the market to go up and then it goes up a little bit and then it turns the other way around. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you just basically exit your long position or your buy and then enter into a short position. Yes, That's yes. Um, the reason why I'm explaining this further is because there are, there are many, um, you know, in this audience as well who are so used to uh, share investing but not used to futures market yet. <laughs> ah, all right, all right. Sure. So even, yeah, even the long and short also sometimes people uh, don't what know. What's the what meaning, right? Yeah, but I bet I I guess some of them, most of them already know because we actually run a, a series of uh, workshops, yes. right? Yes. Uh, on trading. So uh, so long means it's like buying a share, like buying, right? You yes. buy and expect price to go up. And person who short, if you short the market and the market comes down, you make money when it comes down. All right. Uh, yeah. So that, that that's long and short. Yeah. Okay. The short, yeah. It's short. It's more like a, you 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 pretend yourself like a Josh Soros. Short the issue market. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Better, yeah. You do cost averaging. Yeah. You you average your cost down, but you have to make sure that the company will be able to sustain <laughs> the downtrend, lah. Right. And then it's gonna come back. So yeah, I, I think importantly, if you are an investor, you need to look for um good fundamental company, right? Because only these companies will be able to rebound back uh, when markets go down, right? So that that's the that's the thing about markets, right? Um, even yeah. good companies' prices can come down as well, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, so so you know, market has volatility in the short term, right? But but yeah. um, 
Royce, do you trade shares also or just trade the indices and the futures market? Uh, no, I, I know I not trade share. Even our Malaysia stock market there is uh, 280, I have, I'm not mistaken, can be used to short the market. But not, not really, we, I'm trading the share. But most of the time, I'm trading in the in, in the indexes and also what I call the commodity. Mm -hmm. uh, this tool. Mm. But what, yeah. you can explain why you trade futures but not shares? Uh? Uh, because uh, futures is more uh, volatile for the market or the price up and down is more volatile and also the buy and sell can be uh, very easy to get in and get out i will say that because in the futures market uh, it, it uh, what i call the execution is under a millisecond you can go in and out so compared to the stock market the stock market is need a buyer and seller is it's not so easy to get in and out you need to hold for some longer time frame but for futures Yes, you can get in and out in a millisecond, I will say. All the prices is there. You can go in market and go in out with the market also. It's very fast. You can make it and transparency. Lah. Another one is a transparent because uh, futures is move, uh, it, it moves globally. So uh, uh, nothing nothing else about what the fundamental or any, any things that uh, were going to uh, go around the market. Okay, So it's not like a stock. Lah. So it's more uh, transparent, I will say that. Yeah, so like for example, when you're trading indexes or indices, yeah. right? Yes, you're yes. not trading one stock or two stocks, you are basically trading a basket of stocks and a basket, yes. <laughs> those are not really manipulated, lah, right? Uh, yeah, not, not easy to manipulate it, yes. Yeah, yeah. some some stocks can <laughs> be like, goring until like crazy. Right? A fly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that, that's one thing. Yeah, um uh, of course in, in you know one thing I, I also do trade futures market because uh. you know um, one thing I like about futures market, of course, leverage is um, an extra thing, right? And leverage is a yeah, double yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to know how to manage it. Uh, what I like about futures is, um, you know, in the stock market, you have mm. thousand over counters to trade, right? Wow. And sometimes you don't know which one to choose. <laughs> thousands mean include the warrants, la, you know, the, the ICLs and, and, and so on and so forth, la, right? Yes. Uh, whereas the indices, oh, okay, you want to trade Malaysian index or you want to trade the Hang Seng yeah. index, you want to trade the Japan index or Korean index, or let's say even yeah. group up futures, or yeah. any commodities, right? So you only have yeah. at least just monitor a few, lah, right? Yeah, um, easier, simple. <laughs> it's easier. It's e easier to spot yeah. opportunity because for yes. stock market, we really have to look and and find which one to actually buy and sell, yeah, right? That's right. Yes. There's too many of them, lah. Yeah, somehow in the stock market, there is a capital also the problem, lah, because the uh, stock market involved in a big, uh, huge capital, lah, Compared to this uh, kind of futures, uh, we just uh, input about thousand. Uh, yeah, can be used to trade already, lah. We'll see that. Yeah. yeah. So you don't need to have a big capital outlay, right? Yeah. Like for yes. Hundred thousand ringgit worth of stocks, you have to bring a hundred thousand ringgit, right? Yeah, no. uh, yeah. If you want to trade hundred thousand worth of, uh, let's say, a futures index mm. futures, or let's say even palm oil futures, you don't need yes. to come up with hundred thousand. You only need to come up with a few thousand ringgit, right? That's right. right. Five thousand ringgit. Yeah. yeah so that, everyone yeah, you can yeah. margin, mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yep. Okay. Let me let me um yeah. Anthony Lau says that short means buying put warren, right? There I, is something like buying put warrens lah. Right? Okay, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Similar then. The fall down the warren will go up, but you know this is basically you are just looking at the direction of the futures market. And and remember that when you when you are trading futures market, you are actually when you buy or sell, you are actually entering into a contract, right? So that's yeah. why they call it a futures contract, not shares or whatsoever. When you buy shares, you are buying shares, right? Yes, yes. When you enter a futures contract, whether you buy or sell first, right? Yeah. Uh, it's all a contract. So that's why you know uh, you don't need to own anything before you go short. You can just come up with a short contract at any time, and as long as there's someone who wants to buy from you, then it can be it can be done in the market, right? Yes, correct. That's right. Okay. Um, Ch Ang uh, from YouTube is asking, what time frame do you use for futures market? Uh, yeah, for this uh, question is a very good question. For the time frame wise, uh, basically I will say that uh, for my side currently I'm using like uh, five minutes. Uh, maybe uh, five minutes. Mostly is uh, using a five minutes. Uh, there also is a uh, fifteen minutes and hourly time frame that uh, we focus in. So because uh, time frame it uh, also direct link to risk uh, reward ratio. So, uh, but risk reward ratio is a major, it's a very big topic. Uh. If let's say you want to zoom in, that is a more towards a uh, time frame that we used to set up also. Because from the time frame, we, we will uh, calculate uh, how many uh, percent or how much 
pointer that we're going to achieve per daily basic for from this time frame. So uh, normal setup, I will say uh, five minutes. Five minutes should, should be very good enough for for the to do the Malaysia uh, trade. So for the bigger time frame, it uh, you need to consider about worldwide market or global market that run twenty four hours. Yeah, you, you need to have a bigger time frame. So yeah, time frame is uh, depend how how you're going to set your your profit target, your stop loss, and where is your your break break even exit plan set up. That, that this is a it is a quite a big topic for this uh, time frame actually because we we need to include of a risk reward ratio inside there. So yeah, five five minutes should be very good enough for Malaysia market. I will say. Mm -hmm. Do do you trade intraday most of the time? Uh yes yes. Uh, I'll do intraday more of the time. Because I want to get out the profit uh, easily. Uh, no need to worry about the get up or get down after the break time or overnight that we I can't sleep at all. So mm -hmm. intraday is, is a very very good uh, for, for us uh, as a maybe a huge big uh, contract that going in out easily. Uh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a question here from um Yit Fong. He, he asks, Hi Royce, do you use any proprietary software? If yes, uh, what are the recommendations? For proprietary software, I will say no. We are using a uh, very normal as what uh, you are using also. It's from the broker. It's a very simple platform, which is uh, mostly we using a uh, like call uh, CQG. This uh, platform to running a very normal trade. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. we did uh, every day. Yeah. Okay, guys, later, if you need more um, information about futures trading, we will put in a link in uh, later so that you can actually contact uh, Yutaka Shoji uh, uh, who is a licensed futures broker here right here in Malaysia? Um, then you can ask more questions. All right. So I'll I'll put that link later on. Okay. So regarding to the uh, software again charts, right? Um, there's a question from Apnash uh, asking uh -huh. any good indicators to use. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, my old friend Apnash. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Basically, the indicators. If let's say you want to use the indicator, I will I will say the indicator. Uh, mostly is a lagging. Uh, I, I will truly tell you, like, it's a lagging. So what, what we can do for, for this kind of indicator, you can use uh, maybe like a MACD, right? Uh, for the bigger time frame or maybe a MA crossing. This, this kind of uh, very simple uh, indicator will be make use of, let's say you want to analyze the, the past history of the market. Lah. So for the future, because we do all it's about pending order, we plan ahead on the pending order. So what we do is uh, using uh, FIBO, it's a very good uh, uh, usage for FIBO. So you can pending your order, your pricing ahead before the price action move according to your to your plan, that order that you put in. So indicator wise, I will say that maybe it's a simple MACD or, or MA will, will be okay for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you mentioned about um, using price action most of the time, right? Um, yeah. Do you have a set of indicators or you just look at the charts and see how the price actually react? Um, yeah, for the for the price action, I will, normally I will do is, uh, there is a naked chart which, which is uh, nothing about the indicators. If you let's say want to use indicator, you can uh, deploy the indicator. Uh, that is uh, in the chart also. Lah. But normally price action, it won't use indicator. It's a naked chart. But by, by using your, your own eyes, your screen through, uh, you will know the price is going up or down. So he mm -hmm. is a professional trader that we use. Uh. Yeah, so I guess I think for, for a start, the indicators will actually help you to understand a little bit yes, first. Yes. I think yes. you know, you, using charts for a long time when you see the movement <laughs> itself, you know, or you can aga aga what the indicator try to say already, right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, uh, an additional question on technical analysis. Um, Ang is asking again, Royce, you mentioned uh. Fibonacci replacement is key. Okay, there are a few levels, right? 23.6, oh, yeah. 50. Uh, which one should mm -hmm. one use? Uh, okay, to, to be simplified on this kind of uh, ratio, uh, for this uh, FIBO debt retracement, normally, um, because it, it uh, FIBO is uh, depend on, uh, it's also depend on what what kind of product that you use, uh, that you enter the market, uh, what is kind of product, uh, soybean oil, crude oil, because every type of the product the application for the FIBO also different. So if let's say you're asking me, Edwise, are you what what kind of uh, a percentage that you're using to enter the what I call the 
uh, the FCPO or FQLI, I will definitely tell you the strategy we are using a uh, FIBO 50. 50. Because uh, why FIBO 50? If let's say you do a calculation, every time the FIBO 50 will be hit, mostly will be hit at the 50. Uh, then the, this is why we come on the FIBO 50. 50% 50 of that is me. Yeah, so I, I I have to agree with you in this as well because I also did a lot of uh, you know uh, research on on even Malaysian counters right not just yeah. the not the CPO or FKLI. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course, you know um, it's not hundred percent that's gonna retrace yeah. at fifty percent, but most yeah. of the time they will respond at fifty percent. Yeah. Yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> but that will be the first one to use lah, right? Yeah, yeah, depend lah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're gonna go into the next segment soon, but um, now it's time for the second question, the second wow. giveaway. All right, so are you guys ready? <laughs> okay, if you have any more questions, you can just type it in. All right, um, you wanna ask about, um, uh, you know, the futures market or you know how how do the trades work? And and there's also a question from Florence Chin that you know, uh, talked about uh traders that trade for companies now. All this information, I think you can um, you can ask uh, Yutaka Shoji later on. I will give you a link so that you can put your inquiries to them. All right. Uh, here, because here we're gonna basically focus on the topic today, lah, right? Which is why yeah. traders lose money. Yeah. So other than that, anything that's got to do with trading in the futures market, mm. uh, then we'll give you the link where you can ask questions. All right. All right. So guys, ready for the second question? Okay. Um, Okay, second question has got to do with what we have discussed earlier. So I hope you paid attention, right? So that um, you you so that you are able to answer this one. All right. So I'm gonna put it up on the screen. Okay. Um, and I've already mentioned this. Um, and decision is final uh, because this is a, this is not an A B C. Uh, whichever question that we think is right, that will be the final answer. And once I announce uh, the winner, it will be final. All right. And it's based on my screen. So uh, basically, the only person who witnessed this is, is Royce, lah. Okay, because <laughs> you want to see the screen. Okay, so now the question is: What is the first type a person must do before starting trading with real money? That's the first one. So you can answer your questions now. And once I get the first answer, I will put it up on the screen, and we will contact you. Okay. All right. We already got the first, we already got the winner for the second question. Okay. But um, I'm just going to let this refresh for a while so that I get the person who correct answer, answer correctly first. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you for answer. I think you can stop answering already. We already got a winner. <laughs> I just have to wait for this thing to refresh so that I get the person, the first person who actually answered this. Thank you. Thank you so much for answering the question. You most of you got it right. Right. Um, the answer is paper trading. Yeah. So congratulations. Um, let me just announce the winner in a short while. Okay. So before I announce the winner, I'm just going to con continue our conversation today. Right. Um, so Royce, Royce, what kind of returns that you'd be expecting if you're trading those indices and uh, in the futures market? Mm, okay. Uh, very good question from Benny. What is the return? <laughs> All right. So be uh okay uh to be uh honest that to let you know the return uh for as a professional traders i will say that uh the return must be able to cover your first margin as i can say if let's say okay i will uh, put an example if let's say uh fcpo now is about uh four thousand five so actually we will have a goal we'll put a goal there so it means the goal that is about uh about a few months uh, must make a return of four thousand five so this is uh, every every month that we calculate our profit target example for 30 percent for every every month if let's say you are on the trade yeah you must you should be make it for the 30 percent or 20 to 30 percent uh, is a reasonable uh, return for every month on this of uh, 4005 i will say that so by continuous uh, this kind of practice uh, a year yeah you can get about 100 percent on your trade portfolio uh, I, will, I will say that uh. Mm -hmm. I think that, that the returns also depends on mm. uh, how you can trade, like, whether your trading plan yeah. is able to achieve it. Because the yeah. thing about futures market, your trading leverage, mm. the, the sky is your limit, like, right? How, how much you <laughs> how um, much you will put in? <laughs> yeah, how much you gonna put in as well? I think if you want to make hundred percent a month, also you can, but your risk will probably be also very, very high. 
Right. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's more pressure. pressure. <laughs> so yeah, more pressure, right? So yeah. it's a balance between your yeah, your real life balance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, in, in your experience right. trading um uh, the indices, you also trade all the other indices like um uh, the you know Asian indices, right? Uh, yeah. which market is your favorite? Uh, I will say that uh, the most easier market to trade is uh, our local market, which is uh, so-called FKLI. It's the most easier to trade. And the second market is about Taiwan market. You can see on the Taiwan index. So it's uh, quite uh, good in the trending. And we, we're able to measure, let's say, by using a FIBO also can be measured. Uh, is this these two indexes indices uh, is a very good indices. We'll say that to this both for either Malaysia and also Taiwan. And uh, for if let's say you want to be more exotic, uh, want to be more faster way, uh, yeah, you can look for the Hang Seng index. It it moved very very fast. Uh, but when talked about Hang Seng, I will think that uh, we we still far away. <laughs> From them because they are using all the AI, artificial intelligence, or algorithm, or or kind of supercomputer to to move in the trade. Uh, not that easy to make the Hang Seng move, but uh, yeah, it, it really very very fast. It really very fast. So even our computer still lag on the enter the trade on Hang Seng. Mm. So not that easy. So but uh, between the market, uh, Taiwan and uh, Malaysia is a very good market. It's a very good market. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I remember I, I attempt to also try to trade the Hang Seng Index, but you know, you, when you open the screen, you see the numbers jump up and down so fast. I, <laughs> I was like, oh, oh I think no need. La. <laughs> <laughs> like crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Also, if, if you want to start trading the futures market, the best place is still the Malaysian futures market, yes. isn't it? Start, start from the local first. Uh. Swim at yeah. our, our kampung first, uh, then only go for the ocean swimmer, I say. <laughs> yeah, and then actually, because you are, we are also in the local market. You can also f have a feel of what the market is doing and what's happening as well, right? Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Trade yeah. In Taiwan, I mean, of course, you are a professional. You have been trading Taiwan, no problem. Uh, but uh, if I want to trade Taiwan market, you know, I just look at the prices only. Look at the charts only. I don't know what yeah. really is happening in Taiwan, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yes. that's true. So the one that makes you the most money will be which which market do you think? Uh, I will, I will say that in the Malaysia market is make a good profit lah. So I uh, encourage more uh, traders, is let's say a newbie, yes, uh, start to look at our, our Malaysian market as, as um, uh, for example, FCPO. FCPO is a, is a very good market because uh, we, we are the, what they call so-called tycoon in the market for FCPO because worldwide also look for our palm oil because uh, palm oil is a uh, leading for whole world for even the uh, human consume or, or what they call. Uh, even a machine also used for the biodiesel to biodiesel to consume the our FCPO. So it's a, it's a very good market for FCPO, and uh, I will say that FCPO more easy to trade because uh, it's a seasonal product, like a Busan King, a seasonal product. You you were able to know when it's going to start the uh, climbing up, when it's going to to going down trend. Yes, you, you can actually focus on on the movement of uh, FCPO. I will say that. Mm. So between FKLI and FCPO, which one would you favor better? Better? Uh, I will say FCPO. FCPO mm. are more easier to trade. More easier to yeah. trade. And yeah. I guess because intraday you are trading intraday, there's more movement. There's no more yes. volatility. Whereas <laughs> FKLI sometimes don't move that much, right? Yeah, we also thought that sometimes our computer hang is that our computer hang. And <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, is a problem. But, yeah. I completely agree with you because I do trade CPO as well. Yeah. And you don't have problem with volatility, you don't have problem yes. with liquidity yeah. also. You want to get in and out. Yeah. Yeah, easy yeah. to in and out, obviously. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, I'm just I'm gonna announce the winner for the second question. Congratulations to Jason Bowie. All right. So please type in your contact number or your email so that we can reach you, yeah, Jason. Thank you so much, Tang. And thanks, uh, uh, you guys, for participating. We still have one more to go, so stay tuned, right? And it's going to be at the end of this session. So to win 50 ringgit worth of touch and go top up. All right? OK, now uh, let's let's continue. Uh, right, so now we, we've talked about some of, the, uh, some of the pitfalls, right? Um, yeah, yeah, that's a pitfall. So the next question right now is, what does it take to be a good professional trader to, to really make consistent profits in the market? Uh, to make a success, I will say that. Uh, 
to be a success trader. So uh, yeah, it, it's not so hard to be a, a success in the trade. Like I will say that because the chart is same as a candlestick every day is movement also quite same. But the most important, the first thing is you must learn how to read the chart first, how to read the chart. Uh, to read the chart, not about uh, what, what is the name of the candlestick or what is the title of the candlestick, like like Morning Star, Shooting Star, or, or Dragonfly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not not about that, this kind of level. So basically, to read the chart means that you, you need to know when is the volume coming in, uh, where is the most of the suitable timing to go in and get exit, where, when is, where, what is the time frame that uh, most suitable for you to, to in and out. So this is, is a call to learn to read the, the chart actually. So to learn up this kind of skill, it, it's not a one day or two days. It's going to take you up to about maybe about six months or, or maybe a year. So for the newbie, I will encourage that uh, don't trade too much of the product. Uh, try to use one product, uh, use, a, use a one product. So maybe a FKLI or FCPO first, then uh, try to scale up or sharpen your, your skill. Maybe not too much skill, so one or two will do. And uh, deploy the skill on this kind of a one uh, counter, which is called maybe a FKLI or FCPO. So try, try to absorb this kind of a, uh, up and down volatility movement yeah so once you know where is it to enter where's the right timing i believe you can be a very good success uh, trader on how on learn how to read the chart from the beginning i would say that mm -hmm. so um yeah this, this is the one so uh secondly uh if let's say to be a, a success uh now nowadays it's quite easy i will say that uh, you can use a uh, so-called uh, uh, apply the technology nowadays that uh, have in uh, some type of the platform, which we call it as a as an algorithm, or we call it as a as a market uh, tools that able to let you perform uh, the trade in the in the visualization first because uh, we we not no need to enter the real market but you can try to visualize your trade uh, by putting all your strategies uh, go in. And then run the back testing and also the forward test before you jump to the real market. So from this kind of technology or, or this kind of uh, advantage, uh, I think most of the traders nowadays, they very success to making uh, own own robotic that you can use to trade with the free hand, I will say so. So yeah, uh, slowly from that side, you can make your trade to be a consistent profit and also uh, you can go for long term on the training plan. So this is what we, we did nowadays. So and then the thirdly to be a success, I will say that uh, as a new traders or new beer, uh, I fully encourage uh, try to use a journal. Uh, write a journal, uh, like a diary. Uh, you can do it as a diary type. So make sure every time that you enter the market, you write down a journal. Because because why we need to write down a journal? Actually, this journal is, is not going to take you for so long in the, your, your journey for trade, but it, uh, this uh, maybe costs you about one or two months to write it down. Uh, in the journal, actually, it can, uh, you, you, you actually can do a pinpoint on the minor, minor mistake, this is a minor mistake, maybe an entry, make a, make a wrong entry or a wrong button that click in. Yeah, you just write it down in the journal, maybe for continuous about two to three months. Yeah, so from the minor mistake, you can do a fine tune, then do some uh, corrective action on it. Uh, then you can make your trick more smooth. I will say that uh, write a journal is very important also. Uh, yeah, this, this is what uh, very simple uh, things that we can help the traders to be a success in their, in their journey for trading actually. These are a few things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, nothing else uh, basically uh, to be a success uh, most thing I will say that discipline uh, and, uh, discipline is the most important <laughs> because uh, however you trade how good is your skill uh, that come in at the end you must have uh, very discipline because uh, trading this kind of uh, business is your own business I will say that uh, don't don't put it as a hobby or, or put it as a job scope uh, there's not a title for this trading uh, actually you must uh, put it as title as a business you must Treat it as a as a business. So yeah, in a business term, there is a, you must accept there's some losses, expenses, and also some taxation come in. Yeah, it's it's quite a headache sometimes. Uh, but however, 
However, once uh, you, you make a success uh, in a continuous with the consistent profit achieving, I think at, at, at anything hard work that you put in is uh, worth it a lot. I will say that it's uh, really worth it. So, but start off at the beginning, yes, it takes some time to scale up your all the technique, your strategies. Yeah, yeah. But, but try to use a, a technology to, to make it simple. Uh, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, there's a question from um, Albert Joseph. Uh, mm -hmm. For CPO, how important or do you refer to those regular news reports on CPO like stocks, exports, produce, uh -huh. produce? produce production mm. and yeah on the okay on the news report uh, i will say that news report is not really uh for, for for my viewpoint for my viewpoint for this kind of report export import the uh, the productivity everything uh, the production how how much is it uh, I, I will say that not so important for my side because we are the trader we most we focus on the pricing up and down and get in and get out will do uh, with the more lot size we put in. So because uh, FCPO itself, it actually trade on the third month. If you, if you let's say you don't want to know more FCPO, it trade on the third month. Whatever the whatever the news uh, report come out, basically it's based on that day. So that day and also you trade on the third month ahead, actually it's not really <laughs> make sense by using the news to trade on the third month. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would say that it depends. If let's say you hold for long term, maybe you hold for six months or, or a yearly or rollover, news maybe you're going to refer to lah. But as a long term, what 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 for the news you just put in will do lah. <laughs> I would say that. So, but for the short term news, it also not really impact because we need to get in and out. It's a very fast, and also we cut our profit. We left the market already. So mm. this is what we do lah. Hmm. Okay, fast in, fast out lah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we still have a few more questions coming in, but before we go uh, for mm. the questions, before you answer the questions, I'm just going to share a few more information before we proceed. Mm. Yeah? yeah, so just allow me about a few minutes before we, we continue. So, now for those who are interested, so Busa Malaysia actually has three main products, right? We have the securities market, the share market, which we all know, they have the derivatives market where you trade futures and also options, and now of course, we have the Islamic market as well. All right, so derivative market. Uh, of course, the futures indices, palm oil futures, uh, anything that is not shares uh, falls into the derivatives market, all right? And of course, there are many different products that are available for traders in Busa Malaysia derivatives, but you see there's a, there are two stars there because mainly retail investors trade CPO futures, which is Royce's favorite and also my favorite, and also the PLCI futures, all right? And of course, Yutaka, Shoji, is a participating organization with license to trade Busa Malaysia derivatives products. All right. So now, um, if you want to have more information about futures trading, if you want to get in touch with Yutaka, uh, I'm going to put a link right now. Uh, you can actually click that link to um, to ask information, to get more information about futures trading and um, representatives from Yutaka will be able to assist you in your questions. All right. Okay, now let me see what do we have left. Huh? Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> okay, now um, I'm, we're gonna come up with the last last giveaway today tonight, right? Last giveaway. Um, it's a very simple question which we just mentioned. So um, let just me pull this out. Huh? Okay, everybody ready? Okay, the question is. Which futures of derivatives market is the best according to Rice and also me? <laughs> okay, you can answer those questions right now. Okay, so while while they are answering the question, we can yeah. we can go on. Yep. Okay, question now. Uh, there's a question actually from uh, from Melissa Lua. Asking yeah. when trading indices, let's say HSI or Hang Seng Index through Busa, the only available instruments are structured warrants, which are a spread before one bid moves. How can we better manage risk reward ratio if we want to close a position before Busa closes? So I think for, for Melissa, she only knows that uh, you can create HSI through the warrants only structured warrants. Maybe you wanna you wanna give uh, her an alternative. Uh, 
instead of just warrants? Uh, warrants, I think it's not my part of it. Uh, but uh, the thing is, uh, if you want to close a position before bursa close, so for for this sentence, uh, I, I would say that if let's say you want to close the position, uh, mostly I, I, I would suggest that uh, uh, 30 minutes before market bursa close down, you must do the exit exit plan. I will say that you must close your position. Else, it will hold throughout the tomorrow market that we are not sure uncertain market that for tomorrow. So for intraday trade, I will say that half an hour before bursa close, yes, we must uh, exit at the plan there. So, mm -hmm. but uh, for the warrant, I, I have no no idea on it. Maybe Benny will, will be more answer on it. Mm. Yeah, in fact, if you want to trade Hang Seng, actually, you can trade Hang Seng future, index futures, right? But yes, it's not yes. under um, the securities, it's under derivatives. But of course, it does not fall under Busa Malaysia derivatives. It falls under the, 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 the Hong Kong market. Yeah. Uh, but there are a few brokers who are actually if allow you to trade mm -hmm. Hong Kong indices. So you may want to find out. And you know what? Remember, the, we sent the link earlier. You can ask the questions at that link. All right. Then um, um, Yutaka Shoji will be able to assist yeah. you. Right? So if you want to know, uh, because we only think that you know HSI or Hang Seng Index, <laughs> you can through the shares, but you can also have an option to trade the futures yeah. as well. And, and you know, like um, Roy said earlier, when you yeah. trade in the futures market, you don't you don't need to worry about the spread, the bid and the ask, or the buy and the yeah. sell. Price, yeah. because it's always there, especially Hang Seng. <laughs> the market is one of the most active markets, not just in Asia, but the whole world. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, so we already got a winner. Um, okay, we already got a winner. Okay, uh, okay, from from YouTube, actually, we got a winner from YouTube. Although, although the the, the answer is not fully correct, but it's there lah because I already asked about the futures market, right? And the winner is Lim H K who answers CPO. Okay, uh, so CPO futures lah. CPO means is crude palm oil, right? So it's crude palm yeah. oil futures. Uh, but since I'm asked the question, what futures market? So your answer CPO, I deem it as correct lah. So you're the first one, Lim H K. Congratulations. Jason Bowie, you almost get the second gift, right? You come in second, okay? Um, but you already got one, lah, so we <laughs> give it to Lim Heche. Lim Heche comes first. So uh, congratulations, Lim. So please do uh, send us your contact, or if you don't want to put your contact, or if you, you know, to, to protect your privacy, you can also message us on our Facebook page, right? But since you're on YouTube, you probably have to put in your contact, lah, either email or your contact so that we can reach you right so congratulations lim and for those who participated thank you so much for participating um uh, that's all that we have a giveaway for uh, today but you know we try to get more in the next session as well so do stay tuned all right okay we'll, we'll go through a few more questions before we wrap this yes, up yes okay. yep. um i think there's one or two more questions that's coming uh, okay, here Anthony Lau is asking. Uh, you usually okay. trader will place order before market open or wait after some time after the market open. Okay, Anthony. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a good question also. So uh, basically, I will say that uh, most of the trader, it uh, I will say as a professional trade trader, uh, we we always uh, look for the after market open. Then only we start to place in the order because why? Because we need to wait for the market become a stabilized first. It's not going to fluctuate all the up and down is uh, so volatile. We, we're not going to target on this kind of before market open, we jump in. So most of the time, we will wait until the market stabilize, everything is settled. Then only we're going to place in the pending order. So this I'm um, usually do. Uh, yeah, hope to an answer a answer question. All right. Next question. Okay, this is from Jason Wong asking for Fibonacci retracement. How do you choose for point one and hundred on the high and a low pivot? Because there are many actually levels you can choose, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, there is an answer. <laughs> okay, the answer is there. So yeah, basically, uh, we will okay for the pivot point. So basically, we will select high low. Use a high low from before. Uh, okay, the high low, which means uh, the highest point, the highest. A peak point at the peak and also the lowest uh, peak point then we we use the FIBO to measure at uh, once the the FIBO got a retracement means a few candles uh, it bounced down already so then we we put the FIBO there to measure for the 50 percent 
for for this uh, retracement. So this is what we 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 do lah every day lah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um. I think I still got another one or two more questions. Hold on, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Oh, Derek is asking. Actually, YouTube stream faster than Facebook. It's not fair to Facebook viewers. As I answer, <laughs> yeah, maybe they said you should go YouTube. But okay, next time, next time we'll try to be fair, right? Uh, maybe you want give in YouTube, one give in Facebook. And I didn't know that Facebook is YouTube is faster. So uh, please do apologize if if you know uh, if you do not win and you try as fast as possible to answer in your Facebook. But join us again in the next round, right? Uh, we'll tell you when we can have the next uh, uh, gifts. Okay, now Rasmawi, uh, you hmm. is asking how to calm down after going through a string of losses. Uh, okay, for for this situation, uh, I will I will say that uh, to to calm down uh, after <laughs> starting. Uh, okay, for the losses, uh, it based on how how is a how is your capital? We will look at uh, If let's say you just put a very very narrow on the trade capital. Yeah, it's, it's very pressure, I will, I will say that. So for my suggestions is uh, for this uh, capital setup for the trade, uh, you, you must try to put at least a one-to-one -one buffer. One-to-one -one. means, uh, uh, means uh, FCP, let's say uh, 4,005, you, you, if let's say you can af afford to, to put another 4,005 is the best way to do the trade. Also, uh, you, let's say you, you put just a, a 5,000 to trade, uh, the buffer is just a 500. So it, it become a very stressful when to, to do the, the, the trade when also, when the, the most stress come in when facing a losses. So but however, because uh, in a in the trading is not so called a, a, a perfect sure sure make a good profit, but these uh, losses must be accept. You must be accept the losses and try for the next round on and maybe you do some correction on your strategies and, and try to look for an, another good strategies for, for uh, use up in terms of this uh, trade be, uh, depend on the what product also like, you you trade so but it is a very sad to say that uh, I, I was i would advise that to put more capital to to low down the the stress pool on the market movement uh, when you're facing a losses uh. mm -hmm. all right now um maybe two more questions before we end this yeah. right uh, yeah yeah right from Florence is asking uh, uh, two times for futures trading. Can you set up a trade and it will automatically be executed by the computer, like US? So it's like I think robotic trading, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yes, uh, definitely. Yes, I will say yes, you can set it automatically. Uh, it will move as uh, execute for, for you and also exit according to your setup. But uh, the most uh, problem nowadays is uh, it depends how what who is a vendor and, and what is a uh, Software you're going to link up with uh, with uh, what I call so called uh, a license uh, broker. So yeah, th this is uh, not an easy part. And and how good is a uh, setup for your PC, your 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 what I call your internet line? Is it can be uh, very smooth? It can be yeah. You you need to know more about this kind of uh, automation setup lah. Yeah, you need to get more IT on the coding everything. Yeah, mm. but as, exactly, I would say yes. It, it can be moved automatically nowadays. I would say yes. Okay. Um. um okay. Uh, last question. Yeah. Last question. Okay. I I think got two more. Two more. <laughs> this is very important. I think Anthony Lau is asking. Uh, for CPO, the margin is four thousand five. But um, should you put in four thousand five, or what is the ideal to start trading? Okay. For for put in to, to trade. Okay, uh, this four thousand five is uh, is so called a margin. So is uh, I I will say that if let's say you put a four thousand five, it's not a really a good figure that you you come out with four thousand five. Uh, basically, I will advise that you can put in at least uh, like uh, six thousand or maybe even more for maybe to eight thousand because uh, the price for four thousand five. This margin can be moved up and down. Sometimes it's going to increase by Bursa Malaysia to maybe five thousand five or, or six thousand maybe. So if let's say you just put a four thousand five, I think it's not a good price. Maybe add more to maybe or eight thousand or seven thousand. It, it's a it's a because we need a buffer also, right? Mm -hmm. We need a buffer. So yeah, maybe a forty or fifty percent increase. It's a better way to trade. More relaxed.
Mm, yeah, I think give some buffer, lah, right? Don't don't yeah, put the yeah. quickly the margin. <laughs> no, you get margin calls in there when you got position <laughs> every day. <laughs> okay, last question from Albert Joseph. She's asking, um, mm. your pending orders are limit orders or stock orders? One. Oh, okay. Uh, every questions. Okay, is uh totally is depend on how your is your trade set up. If let's say you are using a limit order. Limit order for my style, which is, uh, I will say that limit order is a kind of uh, concept of buy low, sell high. Means you are putting the price is below than the market price. Uh, so you, you hope that the markets come down and then catch you and bring you up again. This is called limit. Uh, stop order means uh, before the price hit the, 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 the what they call the, the market, uh, the market price hit the order. So you put a pending there. So, for my, it's dependent, it's, it's fully dependent, I will say that. If let's say market already uh, moved very fast, very volatile, so I hope that the market come down, so I will put a limit order. Uh, if let's say I will prepare ahead of the market move, I will use a stop order. But most of the frequent, I will use stop limit this order. <laughs> it's not a limit, it's not a stop, it's a call stop limit. Ah, this type of order I will use. All right, excellent. <laughs> okay, I think time, uh, we're really running out of time. We're really actually uh, more than 15 minutes. So, Royce, thank you so much yeah. for your yeah, well, just, so yeah. much for sharing your thoughts. Yeah. And I hope that yeah, you guys who are listening is able to take back um, some of the advice uh, today. Of course, the advice is about how not to become a losing trader, right? And uh, yeah. that Royce share with you will be able to propel you to become a successful trader. All right, so before we leave, I just have a few announcements. Guys, remember, if you want to trade a futures market, please do trade a regulated market because that's where you're going to save your money, right? If you are trading in an unregulated market, if the company closes down, then you're going to be in trouble. So Busan Malaysia Derivatives is, of course, being supervised by the Securities Commission. They are regulated and all the participating brokers under Busan Malaysia Derivatives, like Yutaka Shoji over here, uh, is a licensed broker and they are all under the market or uh, capital markets act so you don't have any problems uh, they are here right in malaysia uh, the reason why i'm informing this is because there are many other people who claim to be futures brokers but they are not regulated so please do find out more so if you want to find out more information from yutaka shoji or what products they have to offer please do contact them with the link that we sent earlier all right and lastly um Busa Malaysia has also come out with a new uh, portal or website for e-learning. So if you guys are interested, please do go to brusaacademy.brusamarketplace.com to learn more about trading. So we have a suit of a lot of online learning in there where you are able to extend or sharpen your skills, whether in investing or trading in the equities or futures market. All right. Okay. Okay, so lastly, I have to share this as well. So I know, voice. Uh, uh, I have to just keep you here for a while. Yes, okay. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I just want to um, inform you that uh, you know because we do run these sessions live every single day. Tomorrow we're gonna have a crypto uh, session, right, on crypto uh, currencies and uh, blockchain. So tomorrow on Thursday at eight pm. Uh, but please be reminded that. Friday until Sunday, there will not be any live sessions because we are taking a break for the Merdeka holidays. So Friday until Sunday, we will be back only on Monday. All right. Um, Monday is the Merdeka day. So we have a Merdeka day special for you guys. Okay. Uh, that is to you. That is uh, ask us anything sessions. That is to prepare you for the coming uh, market when it opens on Tuesday. So tomorrow will be crypto session. And after that, we'll take a break until we see you again on Monday. Okay. So, Royce, sorry to keep you waiting. And again, okay. <laughs> thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight. And I hope that uh, we'll be able to um, see you again uh, in, in, in the future. And yeah. for those who join us tonight, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we just want to wish you uh, all the best in your trading and have a good evening. Okay. Thank you, Benny.